the big part of globalization is financial globalization, which means financial integration. It's not just that people move between countries and goods move between countries, but also capital moves between countries. And that has a lot of benefits. Financial integration is going to help to allocate funds in an efficient way. If you look at developing countries and emerging markets, a lot of their growth finance with capital flows. If all the countries in the world are like uh, North Korea, then there wouldn't be any capital flows between countries. Shebnem Kalemli Oshan is an expert on international finance and financial integration. She has commented on the need to establish a broader financial union in the Eurozone. We can definitely improve on the financial integration in Europe by going full-fledged with capital markets union. It's going to allow cross-border capital ownership and asset ownership. This is going to be really citizens benefiting from that, and it's going to affecting people's day-to-day -day lives. If you compare to U.S., capital markets are all integrated. But if you look at historically, this doesn't happen in 20 years. It doesn't have to be 100 years for Europe. I mean, technology is a completely different level right now. But I think it's important to understand and be aware of the need of this. Capital markets union is very, very important and necessary, and we just cannot just stop with banking union. Looking at emerging markets, Kalemli Ushan emphasizes how developing countries need to improve institutional quality for foreign capital to flow into their economies. Countries like China, Brazil, India, Turkey, these countries were growing like 7-8% a year. You can't finance that with domestic savings. So the capital is going to come uh, from abroad. My research shows that one of the most important causal determinants of capital flows to emerging markets is actually institutional quality. The best thing that developing countries and emerging markets do is to strengthen their institutional environment, make sure they have uh, quality institutions, uh, protection of property rights, low corruption, no corruption, actually even better, and uh, uh, structural reforms. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, emerging markets experienced large foreign capital inflows. Because capital flows are more risk-sensitive in emerging markets than they are in advanced countries, some developing economies try to use monetary policy to promote financial stability. Kalemli Oshan believes that the use of capital controls doesn't help much. My research uh, shows that actually we don't get that much out of capital controls. In the medium term and in the long term, you are trying to achieve uh, to control the value of your currency. And that is going to feed back into your monetary policy. I mean, monetary policy should be used for domestic objectives and inflation. It shouldn't be involved in exchange rate management. And if the corporate sector is borrowing a lot in another currency, say in Turkey or Argentina, they are borrowing in dollars, of course, that's an issue. Let's try to make sure there isn't that much foreign currency borrowing in an economy. And this can be done through macroprudential policies. I prefer those policies over policies uh, such as capital controls. <laughs>